Hi, I'm Jacinda Cunahan and this is Coast Community News, 5 at 5, April 1st. Coming up... MP Adam Crouch calls for a public inquiry. Council's infrastructure director talks potholes. The countdown to the Easter Bunny is on. Sarah Lee is turning 50. The Mariners are counting on a win tonight. And Friendly Geordies is coming to Gosford. But to start, Parliamentary Secretary for the Central Coast, Adam Crouch, has called for a parliamentary inquiry rather than a judicial inquiry to further investigate Central Coast Council's financial situation. David has more. It was a bold new move, JC. Parliamentary Secretary Adam Crouch said Central Coast Council's dire financial situation represents the biggest financial disaster of any council in Australian history. In response, Mr Crouch has started his own petition to lobby his minister to hold a parliamentary inquiry rather than a judicial inquiry. Here is what else he had to say. You look, David, under the Local Government Act, Shelley Hancock as the Minister has two options available to her at the end of April. Uh, one of them is that she allows the councillors back into the room, or two, we have a public inquiry. Now, that public inquiry will obviously uh, mean that the councillors remain suspended for the duration of that inquiry. And look, let's be really clear on this. Uh, the public are furious. They're absolutely furious. They want people held accountable for what we saw. And what we did see in the months leading up to this were, were the concealment of the council's financial situation from our community and also from the state government. And, and everybody knows who was responsible for that. You had six Labor councillors and two independents vote as a block of eight to go into confidential time and time again to withhold that information from the public who had every right to know the council's true financial situation. And a public inquiry lays bare uh, what the community want to know. But in addition to that, it means that the, the minister can suspend the councillors from serving uh, effectively and keeps them in administration while that inquiry goes ahead. And despite clashing heads last week in State Parliament, Labor's Shadow Minister, member for Wyong, David Harris, declared his support for an inquiry, though he's wanting the inquiry to look into the amalgamation as well. And here's some of what he had to say. I'm called for an inquiry. Uh, it's been part of our platform, our three-point plan, since the financial woes of the council. We strongly believe that uh, along with residents, that a full open inquiry needs to be held that gives uh, everyone involved, including staff, the opportunity to tell their story. Uh, but we also need an inquiry that looks at the fit for the future process that both Wyong and Gosford undertook, the work of the former administrator, uh, the work of the current council, including councillors, uh, and uh, also uh, the involvement of internal audits and external audits, such as the uh, Auditor General's Office. The poor state of local roads is something Coasties are noticing, particularly after the recent rain and flooding. We decided to go straight to the source, interviewing the man responsible for Council's road infrastructure, Boris Bolgoff. And we asked him how the repair work is proceeding. I have to stress, if there is a pothole, report it. We've got our online system that you can report it or ring up the, the council. A lot of times people will drive past a pothole and go, oh, bloody whatever, you know, um, but they don't report it yeah. and they just get annoyed. I can't stress enough. I'd rather know about it yeah. than people getting annoyed yeah. about it. The full interview with Boris will be published next week, so look out for that. But in the meantime, have a good Easter. Hop to it, Maisie. Thanks, David. Yes, only three more sleeps until the Easter Bunny comes, marking the start of the two-week school holidays. Central Coast Council is running a range of activities for kids, anything from nature tours and live entertainment to online escape rooms and sports clinics. If you are around Hardy's Bay this weekend, pop into their Easter art exhibition in sale. Or if you are at Gosford, watch the pros batten down the hatches at the 13 foot and 16 foot skiff championships on until monday laycock theater will be hosting an acrobatic show called brass monkeys on april 8th and a show on the irish jig called a taste of ireland on april 13. 
Other things for kids include learning how to swim, practicing their basketball skills, creating craft, and mastering spinning the decks. Make sure to check out our website or go to the council's website for more information. Back to you, JC. Thanks, Maisie. The beloved and famous dessert brand, Sara Lee, is celebrating 50 years since opening the fa their factory at Lizero. Managing Director Mark Magnus spoke with us about the anniversary and took us on a tour of the factory. Look, Sara Lee has been in Australia slightly more than 50 years. They used to uh, import the product for the first sort of 18 months to two years or so before they realised how successful it was and so we need to build our own facility. So then they, they purchased the land and built the facility here back in 19, June 8, I think it is, uh, 1971. There's actually a whole orchard facility sort of behind us here. So a lot of the produce, particularly the oranges, was used, were used in our, in our product. I think there's three secret ingredients uh, for us. Um, one is the actual ingredients themselves. I talked before the fact that you know, we source quality ingredients um, locally. Um, and the sort of ingredients that you find at home in your, your kitchen cupboard in your pantry, so they're very familiar. I think the second thing around processes, you know, when we go through, we've got state-of-the-art technology here. So, yes, it's not your small kitchen at home, but it's, you know, it's a much bigger scale kitchen, and it does exactly the same processes that you would bake and cake at home as what we do here. So those two, but the most important thing is that people. A lot of them have backgrounds in, in baking and pastry, especially. Um, but more important than that, they're really passionate about yeah, this business and, and the products that they make every day. Now Hayley has a special announcement. Yes JC, there will be no daylight savings this month with the state government making the announcement last night. It is also April Fool's Day so don't take any of that seriously. On Sunday night clocks will go back one hour giving you an extra hour of sleep. This will give early risers, morning joggers, dog walkers and shift workers one extra hour of natural light as the days shorten with the change of the season. Now it is time to sport and weather with Hawk and Harry. Thanks Hayley. Another top spot dogfight is on the cards tonight at Central Coast Stadium as the Mariners prepare to once again prove their right to be on the top of the A-League table. With the game in hand on the boys in yellow, second place Adelaide United have come to the coast after a six game winning streak that began in their last encounter with the Mariners, a game fans will remember for its three penalties against the Mariners, each controversial in its own way. The Mariners' safety net position on top of the table is gone, their recent form has been shaky, and a loss will see them fall all the way down to fourth, potentially, by the end of week 14. Melbourne City are also threatening to overtake the league. Uh, look, obviously, a uh, short turnaround, so there, there's not much time for... for for too much uh, prep, uh, really it's just all about recovery. We're giving our all, we're giving everything we can, you know, every time we step on the pitch and and no doubt that'll happen again tomorrow night. On the bench for the Mariners will be Woi Woi local Matt Hatch, who in round 11 made history by scoring the fastest debut goal in Australian National League history. Earlier this week, I caught up with Hatch to ask him about the experience, as well as his football upbringing here on the Central Coast. Yeah, I just, swung at the ball and then didn't realise what happened. I couldn't, I just couldn't believe it, <laughs> that it actually went in. And then, yes, yeah, so I found out a, a few hours later that I actually broke that record. And yeah, it's just a, it's a crazy feeling. To watch the full interview, along with the recap on some of the greatest sporting moments in March, please go to the sports category of our website over the Easter weekend. Now let's go to Harry for the weather. Thanks, Hawk. Looks like it's going to be a warm and sunny Easter long weekend with an average temperature of 26 across the four days. Perfect for an Easter egg hunt or a nice picnic. Tomorrow will be partly cloudy with some light winds and a maximum temperature of 25 degrees. The max on Saturday will be around 26 with a partly cloudy sky and some light winds becoming northerly ranging from 15 to 20 k's during the evening. Sunday will also be partly cloudy with a high of 27 and a low of 16. It may be a foggy morning, but will quickly become most, a mostly sunny day with a nice breeze. And for the end of your long weekend, Monday is shaping up to be a bit of a wet one with a partly cloudy day and a 60% chance of rain. Max of 26 and lows of 17 are expected with a southwesterly breeze from 15 to 20 k's an hour. Back to you, JC. Thanks, Harry. All of these stories and thousands more can be found on our website or in this week's Coast Community News Coast Community Chronicle and Pelican Post. Remember to subscribe to all of our socials for updates across the week. 
Jordan Shanks, also known online as Friendly Geordies, is a controversial Australian political commentator and comedian who has over 450,000 subscribers on YouTube. His content often discusses contemporary Australian political issues involving self-proclaimed lowbrow low humour. And in 2019, he was threatened with a being sued by Clive Palmer. After selling out his first show at the Gosford RSL, he has announced a second late night show tomorrow night with ticket sales going to the New South Wales floods. To end, we will leave you with a short snippet of one of his shows. We hope you have a lovely Easter and we'll see you next week. Gentlemen, Julian Assange is back. Good to see he was acquitted and allowed back in the country. You know, if you squint, kind of looks like Kevin Rudd. And no, no, I just haven't had my coffee yet. Hashtag Ruggy. Just in case you missed it, Kevin Rudd fronted a sanity inquiry about media diversity in Australia, and there was some gems in it. However, unfortunately, it was an hour and 43 minutes long, so I got Miss Love to sift through it. But then I looked at the gems, and they were great. On point as always, Mr. Prime Minister. I, uh, sorry I didn't look at it all myself. I've been very busy, and I will get around to reading that book that I promised that I'd read of yours, but, uh, you know, it's just on a long list that includes above it, because it's very important to get this out of the way just annoying. But then after that, I promise I will read your book that I'm pretty sure the cover is just recycled from your very unsuccessful stint into country and western singing. Small town hopes. That's me on the banjo, you know. I now welcome the Honourable Kevin Rudd, former Prime Minister of Australia. I understand the information yeah, on parliamentary is. privilege and the protection of witnesses and evidence has been provided that to a you. boy and he's looking pissed. The hand side record. I haven't seen him this angry since the teleprompter f***ed up his Chinese translation. He's gone for the kill.